Operating systems manage dozens of processes, and each process executes the code of a particular program or a part of it. Your browser is a process, your favorite IDE is a process, and even the service that manages your printer is a process. A process is essentially an instance of a program in execution with its own memory and resources. Individual processes cannot access physical RAM directly. Instead, they operate on a virtual address space, which is mapped to the physical address space by the operating system. Both virtual memory and physical memory are divided into blocks of the same size, called pages and frames, respectively. The virtual memory of a process is divided into several regions, each serving a specific purpose – code, data and BSS, heap, stack, the operating system's kernel space, and potentially other segments. This division is really important for several reasons. The first reason is security. Each memory region has specific access permissions. For example, the code segment is read-only and executable, while the stack and heap are readable and writable, but not executable. Mixing code, stack, and heap segments would make access rights difficult to enforce and open the door to vulnerabilities. The second reason is access pattern differences between regions. The stack grows and shrinks in a predictable sequential pattern, which makes memory allocation and release very fast. The heap, on the other hand, is optimized for dynamic and random memory allocation, often in changing amounts. Mixing them could significantly reduce stack operations performance. And the third reason is isolation of bugs. Separating code, data, stack, and heap regions prevents accidental overwrites and protects against certain types of bugs, like buffer overflows, which are less likely to corrupt the data in other regions. Now let's dive into each of the memory regions and understand the role of each one. The text segment, also known as the code segment, contains the executable instructions of the program. It's typically loaded from the binary file, which contains the compiled code of the program and is often marked as read-only to prevent the code from modifying itself. The size of this region exactly matches the required space to load the entire code of the program. The data and BSS segments contain global and static variables. The data segment stores initialized variables, while the BSS segment stores uninitialized variables. The reason for this separation is that it reduces the size of the executable file and makes the program load faster. Wondering how? Here's the explanation. Initialized variables need to be explicitly stored inside the executable file so they can be loaded into memory when the program starts. Uninitialized variables, on the other hand, are automatically initialized with a value of zero when loaded into memory, so they don't actually have to be stored in the executable file, which reduces its size. The program also loads faster because while initialized variables need to be loaded from the executable file into the data segment in memory, uninitialized variables don't have to be loaded from the file. The BSS segment can simply be allocated and batch initialized with zeros. Mixing these two regions would force all static and global variables to be loaded from the executable file, which would take longer. The heap is used for dynamically allocating memory. Think of malloc in C or the new keyword in C++. It relies on a memory allocator to manage the memory available to the program during runtime. A memory allocator tracks which parts of memory are free and which are in use. When a program needs a chunk of memory, the allocator finds a suitable block of free memory, marks it as occupied, and hands it over. When the program is done using it, the allocator reclaims that block so it can be used again later if needed. When a program allocates memory on the heap but never frees it when it's no longer needed, that memory block remains unusable until the process exits. This problem is known as a memory leak. Over time, memory leaks cause unused memory to pile up and may eventually cause the program to crash. As the program requests more memory, the heap typically expands upward from lower addresses to higher ones. The stack, on the other hand, is a simple and automatic storage area that grows downward from higher addresses to lower ones. It uses a basic last-in first-out structure, which is why it's called a stack. When a program calls a function, the function's local variables, any past parameters, the caller's return address, and potentially other data are stored on the stack in a structure called a stack frame. The more nested the function calls, the more frames are stacked on top of each other. The infamous stack overflow error is caused by too many frames being stacked. The stack memory region is limited to a certain size, usually ranging from 1 to 8 megabytes, depending on the operating system. If a program runs a recursive function without a proper stopping condition, has a deep function call chain, or calls a function with unusually large local variables, it may crash by overflowing the stack. 
Stack memory allocations and releases can be managed with a single pointer that points to the top of the stack, or the bottom, depending on your perspective. Every time a stack frame is pushed, the stack pointer advances by the size of the frame. When a frame is popped, the pointer moves back by the size of the last frame. This simple pointer update is one of the reasons why memory allocations and releases on the stack is so fast. The heap, on the other hand, uses a memory allocator, which must find a suitable free memory block, update internal data structures, and return a pointer to the address of the allocated memory. This process takes much longer than adjusting a single pointer. The topmost memory region in the virtual memory of a process is reserved for the operating system's pages. These pages are mapped to the operating system's kernel in physical memory, which makes it more efficient for the program to execute privileged code, such as reading and writing to a storage device or sending data over the network. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.